Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Season 3 Pro League coverage. Maven and I just had to go calm ourselves down. We, I, I need still, chapstick after that. I'm still shaking. I'm waiting for an invite right now to the Phase vs. Isolation series. We'll get on that right away. You just, I just tweeted, Maven. I think we just witnessed the greatest Pro League match in all three seasons of AW. <laughs> like, for what just happened. I, I, I'll tell you what. Uh, I love to cast when I get into the matches. It's so much easier. Uh, I was so into that, like absurdly into that for an online match. Yeah. I am so happy. Like if Swanee was here right now, I kid you not, I would kiss him directly on the lips. You said if, if Epsilon win, then you have to uh, kill Benson. So I think that was better. I don't even think that he's not a citizen, so that's not illegal, right? Yeah, no, you should be fine. Honestly. Yeah, no, yeah. I think I can get away with that. Yeah, you should, you're good, but I I can't stop laughing. I'm smiling ear to ear. Crazy stuff. TCM team killing in not only round 10, but t round 11. And it was just TP killing Jurd out of nowhere. It was just uh, out yeah. of nowhere. Well, the funny part is I, I tweeted at God. I, <laughs> I actually said a prayer while we were playing. And miraculously, there's a team kill for TCM in round 10, then a t uh, team kill in round 11. Like, honestly, I would not be surprised if I'm contacted by Steven Spielberg to create some sort of film like this. Like, I don't know if you've seen Angels in the Outfield. It was something similar. Yeah. They look <laughs> TP. Like you T see the angel fly. The angel flew and he, he bumped, he the, bumped the angel TC's, flew. <laughs> yeah. TP's ACM1. <laughs> yeah. The angel just picks up Jordan and drops him right in front of uh, <laughs> TP's gun. Oh, oh that my was unreal. God. Oh, by the way, I sent you an invite button. Oh, did you? I still don't have it. Uh, you might have to. Here, I'm going to go off a of broadcast just to be safe then. You probably have to go back main oh, menu. Yeah, I'll main menu. Um, well, if you're just tuning in, our next series of the night that we should probably talk about is FaZe versus Isolation. FaZe, arguably the hottest team in all of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare right now. Really don't know another way to describe them going up against Isolation, a team that I can even tell you who they're playing with as their fourth tonight. Here's a look at the maps. Compound, Hardpoint, Detroit, Search and Destroy, Biolab, Uplink, Drift, Hardpoint, and then Solar, S&D. Host for maps one and two, or one, three, are going to FaZe. ISO hosts two, four, and five. Clayster's host and Havoc's host have both been banned. Should be good. Uh, we gotta, we, 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 I can't believe we have more games. Oh, that like, was that was series one. After I'm that, fine we, with, like we can we can roll some dice and just pick winners for these three. I, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm kidding, obviously. Like, yeah. This is going to be a great match. But how do you like? Uh, I, I wish that was the final match of the night. Actually, if that was the final match of the night, I probably wouldn't be sleeping tonight. I'd be laying in the bed like. Staring yeah. at the walls, drooling on myself. Uh, my adrenaline so kicked adrenaline. in at the end of that oh, one. That was insane. I, like, I got chills several times. Like You know when you get chills so bad, like your your eyes water? Like you're not crying, but you get chills so bad, like you're legitimately your eyes water? That was happening to me. I was sitting here like... Yeah. I can't believe it. I, I genuinely can't believe it. I don't even know what I said during the game five. I couldn't tell you one thing that came out of my mouth. I, I just, like, I think you I ever just... seen the movie Old School where Will Ferrell blacks out and he does that, that elegant dance? <laughs> and he says he comes back. He's like, "What happened? That that's me. I have no that's idea." You right now. Well, I'm sorry that that uh, that, that happened. Uh, you want me to still, try to invite you again? Yeah. Still, please go ahead and send me another invite. Waiting to get in this lobby. I do see one on my globe. I'm joining it. Right. Oh nope. That was a that someone's online. I just sent you one. Did that work? Let me see again. Uh, checking it again, and still don't have it. Might have to do a quick hard reset. It's not popping up. Like usually, when I send the invite to you, it pops yeah. up and says like invite sent. It's All right, not, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly restart the Xbox. But <clears throat> series number one, going all the way to game five, really no issues there. Just went an hour and a half because of how close those games really were. Going all the way in every single game. Maven, your prayers were answered, man. I I honestly I believe that you that that you have a connection to a higher being. In some way. Yeah, uh, I mean, that was that was wild. Like the, the, the two team kills did it for me. I just start, I started to lose it. I was just giggling for a oh. while. Like when that happened, like I, very very rarely do you have team kills in S and T. Uh, well, I don't know, but very rarely. But you know what I mean. Like they don't happen that frequently. Yeah. For them to happen back to back rounds, especially like I wasn't on the engagement, but he killed him with the sub. Like I understand the first one. I think was an explosive barrel. Like that makes sense to me on Skyrise. But I, I have to see what happened from TP's point of view. I just, I still think that there was some sort of influence on his gun. That's probably not his fault. His his bullets might have been bent. Michael, Con bent. Michael Condry two, stepped though. in. Michael We're Condry was watching. As soon as Jack can get in here. Yeah, I I can't believe that this is real life right now. Of how that was, how insane that was. Epsilon going up against all odds too, Maven going down 
losing that game three, then going into the game four where they hadn't yet won a Detroit hardpoint. On then it was on TCM's host, and TCM was perfect in the game mode to win that one. Then go to a game five that Epsilon's 0-4 in so far in season three. Then going down. Uh, five to three, then two team kills in round 10. I can't believe it. I just had to recap that because honestly, most ridiculous, most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> like several, very rarely, like when I laugh usually while I'm casting, it's a, uh, I don't know, funny comments between us casters or having a good time. Like yeah. I was just losing it during that. Like you so were many just things happened. The scenario. Yeah, the scenario was just so absurd. Like the game four hard point. No offense. I, I think Epsilon's a fantastic hard point team. Uh, but online, not, I mean, it's their best game mode, but they're not great, really, yeah. online. I did not think for a second they were going to be able to win that off host. I really didn't. And then the worst part, you almost see them collapse with the final final hard point, oh 45 seconds God. left on the clock. What a series. There they come, roaring back, and just a big play after big play. And, God, I mean, props to Remy, man. Remy and Nogafin, really. Nogafin in game number one started out like crap. Yeah. Nog Nogafin bounces back, goes from what three and twelve to thirty-six and twenty. Has a monstrous game one. At one point, he was thirty-seven and twenty in the game four. Hardpoint had a big one, and then you're Remy. You get first blooded two rounds in a row, and then you bounce back with what was it? A fifth? I can't check it. Out. Fourteen 15 and, and four. Five. Or fifteen and five. So he died round one and two, and then just shut it down with fifteen and three. That's that's wild. Uh, possibly, if you could send me another invite here, trying to see if oh, I, I would get love it. to. Trying to get into this one as soon as possible. Not co uh, cooperating right now is the uh, invite system. Uh, but mine's man. not working. You might have to get one of the players to do it. It might be. Maybe it's my end. I don't know. We'll see <laughs> if we can get a player to send the invite. Over. But yeah, so now just waiting on joining this one. I still can't believe it. We just had a, uh, a poll go out to the chat. What match are you most in, uh, excited for for the rest of the night? 75% of people saying Optic Gaming versus Optic Nation. That will be our... Well, it's supposed to be our 820 matchup. Probably we'll get to that one a little bit late. This match, though, FaZe looking stronger than ever, looking to win another series 3-0. to zero. Isolation, though, team that's kind of in a weird spot right now in Season 3. If they win this match, it will be a huge momentum boost for them. Could really propel them back in that top 8 that where they want to be. Yeah, and uh, the last, I think the last ISO match was... They didn't play last night, did they? I, I No, I cast them on Monday. Uh, they had the crazy... Crazy match with ON. It was a wild one. Like the uh, games two and three combined playtime was probably ten minutes. Uh, it was a yeah. six-zero uh, ISO victory in the S and D, and then Mochilla goes ten and zero, doesn't die. They ten zero them the first side of Uplink in a minute and forty seconds. So that game's over in three twenty. It was yeah. insane. Ends up being an ISO win. We'll see if ISO gets a little bit of momentum off that. But to be honest, <clears throat> there's two teams that you know without any kind of connection issues, lag, whatever it may be, just on paper, statistically, you can't go against, and that's going to be Maven. that's going to be phase and optic. Phase, I, I can't see them dropping this series. I, I really don't. Neither can I. Have you hop on over to broadcaster mode? I just got into the lobby. Oh, for you, anything. Thanks, bud. Now we're going to get things started. Lacefield still playing as the fourth for isolation. This is going to be on phase's host, I believe. Game number one between Isolation and FaZe now underway. Compound hardpoint. Maven, who's going to be your player to watch for either team in this game? Oh, God. Uh, in this one, it's pretty hard to pick anyone but Zuma right now uh, when you're talking about, oh God, really any game mode, but specifically respawns. Uh, yeah. He's been a man on a mission. We saw him drop 53 in a hardpoint the other night. I think that was on Solar. I expect big stuff out of him here as well. On the other side of things, honestly, for me, Lacefield. He's been the fill-in. Uh, he was nuts on Monday night, man. Uh, he led the way in S&D. He led the way in hard points. He filled in, and honestly, in every single game, I think, he was the top slayer for them. Well, game number one now underway. Compound hard point off the start. The break and rush towards Middle Hill. Clayster kills Zuma with a stun grenade, something you don't see too often. Attach picks up two kills of his own. Lacefield gets taken down. Phase with early control. Able to to pick up a couple here, just starting this one off. No one really able to get control yet. Havoc was in for a second before he was going to drop. But I guess talk to me about when we talked about key players, but in this map, with as small as it is, what are the biggest focuses for teams here? From what I've heard from players a lot is that the map plays a little bit like a Black Ops 2 map in regards to anchoring down spawns. So you're going to see the ARs play a vital role. Dito going to be that player for isolation right now, sitting at 2-2. Two and two. Nice headshot there on Enable. But another thing to point out is going to be really the coordinated pushes. 
some of these hills are kind of awkwardly angled. You'll see the, the fourth hill as well as the third hill. Have kind of weird routes you have to take and push into. Gonna come down to the teams who can get those submachine gun players with the good entry kills to take back the hard point and regain control. Off the start though, isolation up by five seconds, the rotation going in favor of them momentarily, but then Zuma and Attach push in to pick up three kills. I'm watching Havoc. He's gonna be picking up a couple here, Jack. Trying to win gunfights around the hardpoint area. He's eventually gonna fall. Zuma getting two, Attach picking up one as well. And so far, I mean, nothing really to take from it, just everyone vying for early control right now. We've talked about the fact that there's really kind of that momentum builder, that, that swing hard point oh. that's going to be the big one. Another team, there, there's Attach. It's going to be an evening of team kills here, apparently. Yeah, there's been like six so far. Really not a matchup, though, to the severity of the two TCM team kills. Right now, though, after about a minute and 45 seconds of gameplay, it was all tied up. A little bit of a lead now coming out of isolation. The scrap time should go in favor of FaZe. Now the rotation back across the map. Let's see if we can get these first few entry kills. Trying to bust in now. Attach, gonna be the first one in. He's gonna have a gunfight. That's actually gonna be won by Havoc. So control, gonna be set up here right now for isolation. So they're able to hold it for just a moment for enable bust in. Dito's gonna get a two piece though to answer back, Jack. And this one, I think the hard points are going to be, I, I think, the closest. That's where I think we're going to be really, really back and forth. And honestly, you know, as much as I want to pick phase in this, ISO, when they're pro rotating properly, is a very, very good hard point team. And when it comes to S&D, I mean, we've watched, honestly, Havoc could put up 45 kills in S&D at any point. I know that's not even possible, but he's capable of it. <laughs> well, he definitely is capable of it, to say the least. One of the highest S&D KDs so far in Season 3. Havoc picking up one kill. Now in a gunfight, gets taken down with the help of another phase member. Five second lead for the Red Militia as we move towards this third hard point. Maven, off the start. Is it surprising you how close this game is or you really do think that ISO stand a chance in this series? Uh, I, I don't, I, when I think about just this matchup, I don't think isolation really stands a chance. But when I think about hard point, they are, they are a strong hardpoint team. Not as good as FaZe, but when it comes down to it, they can, they can win hardpoint maps against just about anyone when they're on. Uh, especially if Lacefield has big game, which we've seen him doing recently. Really, he's just silly kind of lagging behind. And then again, in S&D, when you have one guy that's your all-star, like Mochilla on O.N. that puts these huge games, or, or Havoc on ISO, when you have someone that is capable of dropping 15 kills, you can steal, uh, you can steal S&Ds from a better team. So do I believe FaZe is heavily favored? Yes, but one that ISO has potential to steal. Something to point out already positive 17 in the slaying department for FaZe. On, on hardpoint, their average slaying wins are 18 kills in their favor. One of the biggest differences between teams we've seen so far in Season 3. Only four minutes into this game, FaZe already almost positive 20. On pace for about a positive 50 overall in the slaying department. ISO doing all they can to keep it close now down by about 40 seconds. Yeah, they're starting to pull away a bit here from isolation. You can see when it really starts that up, when you have every player basically positive right now. I mean, Kleister going off 21 11. We got a three streak for Zuma right now. Zuma, again, been the player watching pretty much every game mode right now for FaZe. And this FaZe team, man, just on paper, you gotta love it. Are we gonna have the an answer to the question of Optic versus FaZe online? No, I don't think that's gonna be resolved for a couple more LAN events, but it's awesome that we have that conversation right now. It's been all Optic for so long, and this FaZe team, built to take them out as looks strong as can be in recent months. There you see again, isolation being cleared out. The final 15 seconds of scrap time in a position for FaZe to take it. That'll put them at a full one minute lead. Clayster gets taken down by Dito. Dito right now struggling at 16 to 21. On the other side of things though, the Val player for FaZe, Clayster 23 and 13, just outclassing the opponents at the moment. Still within striking distance though, if they can keep it within 40 here. They can at least bring it down to the final couple hard points and who's able to make that clutch play. But no one really going. I mean, you have Dito on the four streak right now. He's 20 and 22. But outside of that, I mean, really no one has been able to keep up with FaZe right now. And that, that's the best part about this team. I mean, on paper, all of them can just be monsters in the slaying department. You know, we've seen 
the one that will struggle from time to time is Enable, but then look at the most recent land. I mean, Enable was leading the way. I think had the highest KD going into highest the finals. Highest KD was only negative in, I think, three of his 26 yeah, games. Yeah, so the potential is there for every one of these guys to really just go off complete beast mode and control the pace of a game. And that's what you're getting right now. You got Zuma, big time positive attach as well. And Clayster just crushing. He's on a three streak right now. He's 27 and 15, just dominating this map. You know, when this first came out, Jack, people weren't really sure how effective the battle would be, but the more time we've spent in it, there are a couple hard points here that you can really lock down with a battle. And really the thing to point out too is what FaZe does so well, what I was talking to Bucket with about on the pre-show, is that they do such a good job of not only slaying, but getting the objective done. You see time and time again, there's teams who get a little bit too eager with pushing out a hill or chasing down more kills or pushing out spawns that a lot of times they'll leave one player inside the hill who will lose a crucial gunfight and boom, there's 10, 15 seconds for the opposing team. Right now, FaZe still up by 40, even though they're dominating so hard in the slaying department. Silly picking up a nice two piece there to keep isolation in control, down by about 35 seconds. And like I said, if they can keep it within that 30, 40 range, they're still in striking distance. Lacefield on the hard point right now, he's picking up time. They're doing a pretty good job of keeping the aggression at bay. Clay's going to be pushing from the left, and I think that'll probably be it in a second here. Everyone else able to get on the board. They're able to push through. Zuma's going to pick up a two-piece, and the final scrap time, I think it's 10 or so seconds, is going to end up going to phase. I'd say going into the final hard point, they've got to be within 20 or so, or phase is going to be able to close this one out. But this last hard point, no one was really able to get control early. It was really, really back and forth. Right now, though, it is going to be locked down by isolation. Next man in will be attached trying to break this, but he needs a little help here, Jack. That was a great play from Attach, getting towards that back scrap side. Now the coordinated push from FaZe is going to come in with Clayster overlooking the middle of the map. FaZe is able to get it done. Still up by 25 seconds. Isolation doing a great job of keeping themselves in the game. Uh, yeah, and that was, that was huge by Attach because he... He could have made a, a you know, young player mistake and just went ahead and pushed on in. He waited for a little help to come, gets one kill, picks up a big pinch, gets a kill on the hard point, and then gets one with the grenade as well. He was the reason they were able to bust this open as they're extending the lead right now. 15 seconds left to go in this hard point. Really one more opportunity here to milk some time for isolation, and that's going to get cut down by Attach and Clay. All the time going to be going to them. They're going to have a pretty significant lead here going into the final two hard points. And this is all it's been for this phase team. Really outside of the performance from Enable on UMG Dallas, it's Enable staying right around even, but being the one to rotate, the one with the positive vibe and communications inside the, with this team. Zuma, 38 and 27, 11 captures that ridiculously aggressive sub that somehow picks up two pieces that really no one else can. Clayster, 31 and 21, only two captures, anchoring the spawns for his team and just really always outclassing the opposing AR player. And then finally, you have Attach, 10 captures to his name. You're going to see what he does best right here, and that's breaking and getting the entry kills, picking up one with the help of his teammates. Watching Zuma get, well, Zuma is completely outgunned by Lace Shield. That'll be traded out, but they've got a 42-point advantage with 70 seconds left. It looks like game one should definitely be going to phase here. But looking forward, uh, I didn't even take a look. You probably mentioned it. I was still so hyped after that last series that I wasn't even paying attention. They threw it in the chat earlier. So, all right, it looks well, like... What map is it? SD okay. Detroit. So it's, no, I was going to go, oh, so it's phase oh, oh. one and three. Okay, two, four, and five. So this is why I just want to make sure, you know, this wasn't on ISO's house because that would be a pretty devastating game one. Oh yeah, if FaZe wins the search and destroy, then they can move into uplink up 2-0 going back to their host. I just don't see how isolation can do it. 37 seconds remaining. Almost a full one minute lead for FaZe. They're gonna take this hard point. Really not surprising though, as they are nine and one, now ten and one in the game mode here in season three. One of the most dominant teams we've seen so far. If you look at the scoreboard right now. Negative 3, negative 15, negative 25, negative 36 is the team of isolation. It got out of hand really quickly there as FaZe dominating in the slaying department, dominating in captures as well. Game number one going to the Red Militia. Yeah, and honestly, I mean, again, I, I say this a lot, but it's one of those ones where you look at the numbers and you think, God, this could have been even more of a blowout. <laughs> it's completely, oh, yeah. completely dominated them in the slaying department. Uh, that could have been a much, much bigger blowout. I mean, a lot of times when you see that big of a discrepancy, 30 to 40 kills, that's when you see teams losing 250 to 75, 250 to 90, something like that. That's when you're getting 100-point club. But Isolation, a team, again, we saw them do it at relegation. They, they've won hard points while being outslayed. Honestly, it's impressive it was as close as it was. I mean, that was a 
30, 40 point game going down to the final final couple of hard points, but eventually it is going to get away from them. But game two, they need they need havoc. All four they need players. Havoc the they need all of havoc. Yeah, they really do. Game number one for Havoc, leading his team in score, 29 to 34, 13 captures and one defend. Game two, Detroit search and destroy. It's FaZe's worst S&D map so far in season three. Oh and two on it. Silver lining here for isolation. They're down 0-1 in the series. We'll see if they can tie it up after this.